Good morning and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Friday, August 21st. We are continuing out of Daily Morning Prayer, excuse me, using uh, uh, Common Prayer, a, order, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. Uh, this begins with a little on this day. On this day in 1831, Nat Turner led a slave revolt in Southampton County, Virginia, killing 55 whites on his march to the county seat of Jerusalem, where he declared that, quote, the great judgment, day of judgment, was at hand. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you, as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Our song for this morning is We Shall Not Be Moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water side, we shall not be moved. Judge us in your mercy, Lord, that we may live together in peace. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 105, verses 3 through 7. Glory in God's name, holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and God's strength. Continually seek the Lord's face. Remember the marvels God has done, the wonders and the judgments of the Lord's mouth. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant. O children of Jacob, God's chosen. God is the Lord our God. The Lord's judgments prevail in all the world. Judge us in your mercy, Lord, that we may live together in peace. Our Old Testament reading continues out of 2 Samuel, and we are on chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. After David had mourned the death of Jonathan, he inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? The Lord said to him, Go up. David said, To which shall I go up? God said, To Hebron. So David went up there, along with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David brought up the men who were with him, every one of his household, and they settled in the towns of Hebron. Then the people of Judah came, and they were anointed they anointed David king over the house of Judah. When they told David, it was the people of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul. David sent messengers to the many people of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, May you be blessed by the Lord because you showed this loyalty to Saul your Lord and buried him. Now may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you, and I too will reward you because you have done this thing. Therefore let your hands be strong and be valiant. For Saul, your Lord, is dead, and the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner, son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbaal, son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. He made him king over Gilead, the Asherites, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, and all Israel. Ishbaal, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. The time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Our New Testament reading continues out of the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. So then, dear siblings, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. 
We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, we who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Judge us in your mercy, Lord, that we may live together in peace. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, There was a time when the church was very powerful. In those days, the church was not merely a thermometer that recorded the ideas and principles of popular opinion. It was a thermostat that transformed the mores of society. Whenever the early Christians entered a town, the power structure got disturbed, immediately sought to convict them for being, quote, disturbers of the peace and, quote, outside agitators. But they went on with the conviction that they were a colony of heaven and had to obey God rather than man. They were small in number, but big in commitment. They were too God intoxicated to be, quote, astronomically intimidated. They brought an end to such ancient evils as infanticide and gladiatorial contest. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you help us to live out your gospel in the world. We pray for those who do not know your love, that they would be wooed by your goodness and seduced by your beauty. Form us into a family that runs deeper than biology or nationality or ethnicity, a family that is born again in you. May we be creators of holy mischief and agitators of comfort, people who do not accept the world as it is, but insist on it becoming what you want it to be. Let us groan as in the pains of childbirth for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to be midwives of that kingdom. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. <laughs>